Okay, hello everyone. So let me just share a few tips for when I'm out presenting on a large stage with a large screen. And I've been doing this for, for many, many years. I try to make it more of a cinematic experience. And there's just a couple of tips that I can share using Keynote. And one is the Ken Burns effect or the way of you know making a dynamic zoom, which we call it more in film. And you can use the Magic Move tool in Keynote to do that. And I'll show you how to do that. It's dead simple. And then the idea of putting text behind an object within the frame. So it gives kind of this cool effect. Uh, it gives some depth to it. And it's kind of interesting. It's very popular these days, although uh, it's not really a new trick. And then just a few things on animation, perhaps. Just touch on it a bit. All right, so the Ken Burns effect, which is really just dynamic zoom, but um, when Apple came out with iMovie Steve Jobs. Uh, I was a friend of Ken Burns and, and loved his films. Uh, Ken Burns, of course, makes documentaries where they're you know, on subjects where there wasn't film or even video around. So he has a lot of photography and, and photos of uh, paintings even. So he developed this technique where he moves around the screen, even though it's a still image, but it gives the impression that it's a, a that it's sort of filmic in a way. All right, so how you can do this in Magic Move, and, and Magic Move is just under Animation up here. It's an animation, and you click uh, Magic Move right here. So what I've done ahead of time is just set up a, a few slides just using elements. So I started with this slide, just basic elements here. You could put anything in here, a photograph or uh, text or anything. And then you just um, Command D to duplicate it, and then you just can change it, put things wherever you want. And that's what I did here. So these are all the same, except for the guitar, which I added here. So that will be an animation. So for this, I did an animation. So again, it's also under animate, but it's built in, right? Rather than when you click over on this side, everything's going to become a transition, right? But when you click in the slide, you get build in or an action uh, or a build out. So anyway, let's go back to this one and let's select all of them. So that's shift and drag and then we can add an effect to all of them. So let's add the magic move. And you can see that that's the preview. And if we just start playing, this is slide one. So this is the first slide. And then we go to the second slide and the third slide and the fourth slide. And then this next one is an animation. So that's okay. That's over the top. But just as an example, that's an animation of a new object. And now here is another magic move because it's just going to slide five. And then that guitar moved. You kind of see that here, right? Well, that's the magic move it has so much potential, but we're talking about using it in this case for photographs. So here are a few examples. So let's say I have this high resolution photo. So this is pretty much blown up, but this is still within the actual um, limitations of, of the pixels. It's something like 6,000 pixels or something, but I, I've stretched it out. Here I started pretty much cropped, and then we zoom out, and then this one is also kind of um, zoomed out just a little bit, and then we really, really zoom in here. But how do we do that? So it's not really an animation. Let, let's just go here to the first one. We want to go from this one to this one. So we go up to under animate again. It's called magic move. And when you want to make this nice dynamic zoom or a Ken Burns effect, it's, it's usually much lower than two seconds. So if we want to make it subtle, we don't really want it that noticeable. We want it to be quite smooth. So it just depends on what you're talking about, the, the going down the street and you're talking about Japanese food or whatever. And then again, this is a very sort of cinematic, very slow, gradual movement within the slide. And this one, let's just put a dynamic zoom or uh, Ken Burns effect or what we call it here, which is the magic move. So magic move here. Again, we'll make it around 10 seconds, almost 10 seconds. And then this one is the same magic move. See, that's kind of too fast. If we want a more gradual, more kind of a cinematic feel then this one, we start close and then we can zoom out. People might be wondering, well, what is this? <laughs> so these are uh, onigiri or Japanese rice balls. And then this one. And this is not stretching it beyond its resolution. So these are very high resolution uh, images that I got from Motion Array. But if you're taking images with your, even your smartphone, they're going to be uh, large enough to do this. But by the way, when you're adding images, you can just take a bunch. Let me just take two from the desktop and then bring them over. 
and you could do as many as you want. I mean, you could do several at the same time, and it will automatically size it up to fill the frame, uh, usually only one vertically or horizontally. So this one doesn't quite fit, but there it is, All right? And then, well, what if we want to zoom from this and we want to zoom in, but we don't know how far we can zoom in before the quality of, of the image goes down. So we want to, we don't want to go beyond the resolution that it is. So what you do is you go to click on the photo and go to format and under arrange, you'll see it says original size. So then if you don't know what the size is, you can see right now it's about, it's, all, it's a little bit bigger than 1920, a little bit bigger than 1080p because I stretched it a bit. Click on original size and then we see, wow, it's quite large. So if I start here, so we'll start here and end here. Put on the magic move under animate. And there it is. And that's kind of fast. But you can see if it was slower, you can kind of see what that looks like. Right? So it's a high quality image. And then it's zooming out and looks pretty good. Same with this one. We can just duplicate it. So that is where I want to end up. But how close can I start? Right? So we go back here. We click on the image. And we go to arrange original size and we can see whoa okay so very large image it'd be interesting not to show any of the uh the town or anything else just just the mountain because that makes it more of a kind of really interesting contrast we go from this to this and we can do that again go under animate effect magic move we do it more gradually and play it full screen it's more kind of a surprise slow reveal that way Okay, so that's a dynamic zoom or Ken Burns effect, which you can get through just using the magic move. So next, let's look at the uh, idea of putting text behind an object. And what do I mean here? So let's look at an example. So here's, um, well, I could say, whoa, where is this? For example, if you're teaching a class on geography or something, or you're talking about your trip to Europe. So this is, of course, yeah, da da da, -da yeah, that is Stockholm. And you can see, well, wait, what happened here? So let's look at this. So we have an image here that just, it's just this image, right? But what we did, if we go here, actually we've cut out part of it and laid it over. So that way the text can go between it. So it's really nice. You can have it end up here or just like come from the bottom. So it's kind of a, well, it's just kind of a, it's an interesting effect. You don't have to do something like this, but it's really not, not that much work to do it. And how you do that, uh, just as an example here, you can see what I did, but how did, how did I do this? How did I get this here? So let's do it right now. So you click on the photo and then you go to format and image and you choose remove background. And then it's going to be very easy to take out the sky, of course, and you don't have to do it all at once. So I go like that. That's not everything. If I just gradually go through it, I can speed it up. Okay, now we're done. There's a few places right there. So if I wanted to clean that up right there, I just click on it, click on the image again, remove background again, and I can see where I kind of missed right about there. That's okay. And then we're done. Yeah, voila. Okay, so we go to this one. We just can copy, go here. Remember, that's our original image. We just paste over it. So we got this kind of thing going on now. And we'll just use this text for an example. So let's copy this. So here's our new new example. So we paste that over, but move this to the front, and then our text is behind. And then we can put an animation on there. So let's look at some more examples of how I've done this using these uh, techniques. So again, here is the... In PowerPoint, this is called a morph. So it's just these two images. It's going from one slide, and then this is actually the next slide. It's a nice magic move. And then there was an animation. And then there's that technique, which I showed you before. The text comes from behind the mountain. And here I added an animation because I was talking about climbing Mount Fuji. And just a, a move animation. And then again, another animation. But your question might be like, well, wait a minute. There was a kind of a special effect there. You just see this. So what that is, is um, an animation. You don't see anything there. It's like, well, what is that? Well, if you go to animate, you can see it is the lens flare, but you, you know, you don't see anything. So how can that be? So what that is, is I just turned the opacity down. So all that is, is just a, a shape and it's an animation. All right, so here it is. 
right? But if you make that object, whatever it is, it could be anything, picture or text, whatever, but if you make it completely transparent, that animation is still going to be there, that effect, the effect that went with the animation. So that's kind of cool, right? Well, because of the sunset, and I just wanted to give it this kind of, you know, effect. So anyway, sticking with this theme, here's some more examples. And I, I'd use this in a presentation with uh, exchange students talking about hiking Fuji and then talking about how long it would take up. So it's a six hour uh, descent usually on average. And you can see that what it's like up to 4,000 people a day, usually less than that, but you're not there hiking the mountain alone. And then once you get there, you usually spend the night so that you can see the sunrise in the morning with your friends. So you can see you're not alone when you get up there. And then going down, again, this is the cropped into a high resolution image. And then as I'm talking, this is all happening behind me to reveal the people hiking down the mountain. And then there is obviously more narration going along with this. And then we get to this point of the descent can take anywhere from three to four hours. This is actually harder for a lot of people. Uh, here's another example that you could use too. You could do something like this. So you can be as, be as creative as you like with this. But uh, as you can see here, it was the same, same idea of just, you know, all that is is using the uh, remove background tool and refining it so that you can just, so this part is empty and you can just put this part right back on and he gives the illusion that you're kind of in between the clouds and the mountain. Here's another one that I did recently. So again, this is the, fully zoomed into the image and still it keeps the quality and then you could pull out of it slowly to reveal this is Kyoto but it's actually an AI image and then the text comes up so all that is in this case when I said remove background it removed everything automatically except this except the figure there and then for here I just removed part of the tree and put part of the tree back so it gives this great illusion again that, you know, Kyoto kind of comes down in there like this. So it's kind of nice. Here's some more examples. Again, this is an AI image just for an example. Some of the faces uh, are not quite natural, but anyway, just as an example. I just did the remove background and it did a pretty good job automatically removing something like this. So just where it got a little bit bokeh or blurry in the back, it kept the people in the front who were more in focus um, it selected them. So it's quite easy to put the text in behind. And here's that New York photo, but this time we put the text in behind. Or this one, this is, a, this is an AI image, but very easy to remove the background, especially the, the child subject there. So we can bring in the, what we're talking about, the 10 miles that we hiked that day. Or you could bring it from beyond the mountains. And you see on the right that it wasn't really perfect. So I, if I spent more time fine-tuning that, I could get the the right side to look better of course it's not perfect using photoshop would be would be much better but if we don't have photoshop or we just want to stay in the app it, it does work it's good enough and then here's one using this image you could put something like this like the name of the mountain and then some data about the mountain so that's a little bit on using the magic move to get kind of a ken burns effect with photos and then putting text behind objects within the frame, which is kind of interesting, and then a little bit on animation. But if you have any questions about this um, or comments, uh, please feel free to use the comment section, and I will answer your questions to the best that I can. All right, thank you very much.